I'd like to welcome back Julie Cotineau, founder and CEO, Brand Twist, for her conclusion of three branding rules for the pandemic, twisting uncertainty into opportunity. Hello and welcome back. Thank you for your great questions on section one. Now we're gonna move on to part two of branding rules for the pandemic, how to twist uncertainty into opportunity. As I mentioned before, we're going to be twisting by using my proven technique, which looks at innovation from outside of your category, best practices outside the events industry, and twist those lessons to create new ideas for your business. So we already cut covered how to twist your offering. Now we're gonna go and look at two more strategies. The first is how to twist your brand touch points, and the second is twisting for the greater good. So what do I mean by a brand touch point? Um, so again, as a reminder, we're also gonna have a Q&A box in the right-hand corner. You can submit your questions and we'll have another live Q&A with Sam when I finish this presentation. So your touch points are those moments of your brand experience all along the continuum. And great brands really look at four main phases. They look at the discovery phase, which is when people are just finding out about your event and considering, should I join, should I sponsor, should I attend, should I exhibit? The second phase is, and that's what we call discovery. The second phase is purchase. They've made the decision, they're signing up, they're engaging, they're figuring out how to work with you. The third phase is experience. That's when they're actually participating. And during this phase, we really look at moments of how we can surprise and delight them. And the fourth phase, which is really overlooked by a lot of brands, is what we call commitment. This is after the event. How do you keep the leads warm? How do you keep the conversation going? How do you turn people who've worked with you into brand ambassadors so they'll help you promote your brand even when you're not even there. So we're going to look at some examples, again, outside of your industry, and then twist with those to create new ideas. So the first is Virgin. And one of the things that I loved about working with Virgin is they look at the whole continuum of the experience. So for example, on Virgin Atlantic, your brand experience doesn't start when you get on the plane. It starts way before that. And they spend a lot of time thinking about about what that experience is like. What's it like to find a flight on the website? What's it like to book a ticket, to print out a boarding pass? In the case of upper class, not even just those things, but how can we take you, they actually take you in a limousine from your home to the airport. And if you're in Heathrow, you can just roll down the window, hand your passport out the window and get checked in from your car. Then you go to through a dedicated security line and then you go to an upper class lounge, which is not your white wine and three peanuts kind of lounge. This is somewhere where you can get a haircut, get a massage. They really spend a lot of time thinking about the before portion of the brand experience. Similarly, when you land, you can take a hot shower in another lounge, you can get a full English breakfast, and you can be on your way with a Virgin motorbike to your destination. So that's what I mean about the full brand experience. And I want you to think about your continuum and where you can innovate. Sometimes it can be really small moments. Um, this is what I call vomit bag moments. And this is probably the most important lesson I want you to walk away from. What are your vomit bag moments? Now, what do I mean by that? So on airplanes, the FAA requirement is any flight over six hours has to have a vomit bag in the seat pocket in front of you. But most of the time, those bags are just plain white, nothing printed on them. Well, Virgin Atlantic uses this moment as part of the brand experience. They brand the bags red, which is their signature brand color, and they create a little story on them. You know, why, how, how did it get so horrible to fly? You know, remember when flying used to be fun, people used to get dressed 
used up uh, for flying, uh, and they end up with, on Virgin Atlantic, flying will always feel new. You'll always feel like a virgin again on our flights. So I think this is really important, and I would challenge you to think about what are the moments in your brand experience that you can take a fresh look at. And some of these moments might actually be safety moments. This is a safety video from Virgin America, which is not your standard talking head. It's actually a fully produced music video with quite catchy music and great dancers that go over the safety features. People pay attention to this video, which makes them more safe instead of tuning it out. So are there moments with your safety protocols where you can deliver the absolute information, the critical information that you need, but also add a twist, have more fun, um, increase engagement, and actually increase compliance. Here's another example from Virgin Atlantic, a very small moment. These are uh, salt and pepper shakers that come in your table tray. They're shaped like little airplanes. People steal them. <laughs> they put them in their briefcase. They put them in their purse. Instead of fighting against this, Virgin Atlantic embraces this as a touch point, and they're actually branded on the bottom, pinched from Virgin Atlantic. So if I take mine home and a friend of mine turns it over at my house, the brand is continuing to promote itself. I've given my fans a way to become brand ambassadors. So think about what moments can you use in your brand experience to surprise and delight and help people become brand ambassadors. Here's another example from Virgin that actually was a different way of doing things and save them money. And this is with the amenity kits. They realized in Virgin Atlantic that there was a lot of waste in these kits and they were quite expensive to produce. People would take one or two items and then they would have to throw away the kit at the end of the flight. So what we did is they actually walked around instead with a basket of amenities and let people choose their own amenity. And what was really interesting about this is it saved a lot of money, but there was a lot of feedback in customer surveys that this was actually a more personal way um, to get what you needed for the flight. So. Again, the twist that I want you to make with your business is what can you do right now that's both cost efficient and delivers a better experience? How can we make that the goal like they did on Virgin Atlantic? And also, what can you do that is more um, personal? Here's an example from Delta Airlines uh, that I saw recently posted where at the end of the flight, the first class passengers are actually getting a handwritten note from the pilot thanking them for flying Delta. And if a big airline can take all the time to do this, I think that it's something that we can also think about. And I think that it's a great um, touch point because it reminds us that business is really people interacting with other people. And when you can do something personal like this, it goes a long way and it really surprises people. So my question is, are you thanking your loyal stakeholders in a personal and creative way? Never underestimate the power of a personal touch, particularly right now. Now, I wanna talk about touch points outdoors right now. We know that a lot of people are more comfortable being outdoors right now. It's, it's safer, it allows us to social distance, but are we really taking advantage of it in the events industry? Um, here's an example of a company that does take advantage of it in a very creative way. So this is Dos Equis, which is part of Heineken. They've actually created these coolers that are six feet long. So if you want to enjoy a beverage or a coffee with a colleague, um, instead of just saying we should be six feet apart, how about making it more fun and easier to maintain the proper distance? Again, Hopefully this is giving you some ideas maybe how you could take your safety protocols and the things that you're doing very smartly right now to make events easier for people to attend in person, but using it in a way that gives them a smile as well. 
you're probably providing uh, standard safety kits, maybe uh, hand sanitizer, masks, branded masks are really big right now. But I wanna show you a way to twist that and take it even further. This is a client of mine who is a jewelry designer. And right now she's not selling that much jewelry. She sells a lot of vintage jewelry, but she's twisted her business for a new revenue stream. And she's calling these masquerades. And they're basically hand designed vintage uh, created chains that hold your mask around your neck, clipped to a necklace where you can easily put it on and off. And I think it's really interesting because it's twisting something that was just functional to something that's actually uh, fashionable and fun. And it helps people remember to wear their masks and it helps them to navigate the times when we need to take it off and take it on. It feels better. Maybe there are also ways for you to move your events or portion your events outside by taking advantage of some of these outdoor classes and experiences. Um, when I was at Virgin, we had a company that was a pedometer company called Virgin Health Miles, and we all wore our pedometers and got points and got um, gift certificates for those points. So what we would do is we would have a lot of outdoor meetings where instead of being around a conference table, we would take a walk in Soho and talk about our business at the same time. And the benefit of this wasn't just the points and the fresh air, but it gave new perspective to our ideas. It sort of breathed life into them. And so I'm wondering if you could have groups of people, maybe colleagues together in, in um, experiences where they can walk and meet or hike and meet and still have it branded as an extension of your event. You've probably seen a lot of interest in outdoor movie theaters, uh, graduations, weddings are happening here. And again, similar to the funeral, they're also offering a new way of doing things, but also people are really enjoying this different kind of experience. So maybe you could have pods of colleagues that come from the same company that come to an outdoor event like this where they can be together for small meetings but also feel part of something bigger. And recently we saw um, Budweiser sponsor the first ever outdoor concert with DJ D Nice um, and they made this concert, the benefits of the concert and the participants were to honor first responders. So I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more in another minute, but there's a way to, again, tie in doing something outdoors that feels good, that still feels like a collective, but with a higher purpose. Now, if you do have people that are joining from their individual spaces, you can still also make them feel like part of a collective by sending something ahead of the meeting, ahead of the event. So here's an example of boxes that you can get from Party City where you can send materials. I do a lot of naming, brainstorming, design brainstorming sessions. I used to do them in person. Right now I'm doing them virtually. But what I do is I send people these kits ahead of time. So they all have the same materials. They feel part of the creative process. And it's also fun to open a box when you don't know exactly what's going to be in it. So it helps to uh, foster inclusion and banish some of that Zoom fatigue that we can all feel from time to time. And again, here's another clever um, twist from Coors Light where they actually created an app where you can record yourself on a loop for a few seconds nodding or smiling. And if you do have Zoom fatigue, you can leave the meeting and your virtual clone is still there um, present for you. So I think this is really interesting. It says that this company understands its target audience. It's presenting a new way, a more fun way, a lighter way, um, and it's showing a lot of empathy. So how can you twist some of your practices with your virtual engagement to, to have more fun? 
And one of the things that I see a lot of people using right now is video. And I think this is a great time to experiment more with video. Um, I've seen companies like this famous deli in Seattle, Poroshki and Poroshki, do these behind the scenes videos. It wasn't super high production value. It was, it was fine. It wasn't a paid actor. It's actually the manager of the deli who takes customers inside, shows them the safety protocols and what they're doing to keep the place clean, but more interestingly, took them to the back of the kitchen, the place where most of us will never get the chance to go, and showed how their famous pastries were actually made. So the challenge for you is how can you twist this strategy? How can you show behind the scenes the making of your event, your creative process, the literal fabrication of things in a way that makes people feel connected, can be fun, what stories can you tell? Um, the more videos that you make, the more comfortable you'll become with them. And I think it's a great time to experiment. And the last part of the brand experience wheel that I think we need to pay more attention to is the after. Uh, here's a great example from Stitch Fix, which is a clothing brand that uses stylists and personal surveys to send a fix, which is five items of clothing each month in a box. And what's really great about this is there's a handwritten note from a stylist, there's tips about how to wear the clothes, but it's the checkout process. When you're deciding what to keep and what to send back, they make it really easy and fun for you to give detailed feedback on the items, particularly the items you return. And next time, the stylist really takes this into account. Last time, Julie, I noticed that the skirts were too long for you. This time, we've included some things that are uh, mid-length. Right. So how can you, when you're gathering information, which I know you all do after an event about what went well and what could be better, how could you take a twist from Stitch Fix and actually learn more about your customers and their experience, but use that data to personalize their experience for next time and improve that experience? So now we're going to talk about our last strategy, which is twisting for the greater good. And this is so important because right now, more than ever, brands really have to stay connected, not just to people's minds, but to their hearts. They need to show a higher purpose. Here's a brand that I think is doing something really interesting. And this is a Audible, which is a subscription or a membership model brand where monthly I pay a certain fee and then I get credits to download audiobooks. And I gotta be honest with you, I was actually thinking about canceling this subscription because you know, do I really need it? I'm looking at all my expenses right now. And then I got a email from Audible that told me that because of my subscription, because of my membership to this brand, they were able to provide free audiobooks for kids this summer. And that made me understand that they were doing some good and I decided to keep my subscription. Similarly, Dior is another brand that's doing something really interesting in engaging the consumer. Um, they have become part of a larger discussion on female empowerment, and they're doing this through a new touch point, which is um, a series of um, podcasts called Dior, Dior Talks, and they're interviewing female uh, designers, directors, photographers, and getting their take, not just on fashion, but the bigger conversation we're all having right now. So maybe your brand could start a podcast um, with expert tips, interviewing your, your vendors, your suppliers, your exhibitors, keeping that community going, providing value on a regular basis. Here's another example that I think is really important because it does good and it brings in revenue at the same time. It's the dough for dough campaign that you've probably seen in a lot of local pizza parlors where you buy a pizza and you give the money for another pizza that is um, 
donated to a first responder group in your area. And this is really important. You can do good and do well at the same time. You know, maybe you could do something like this where uh, the two, you know, two tickets to your event um, would actually allow you to provide a third ticket free to a colleague who's recently out of work, right? How can you use purchase to also ignite and unlock some, some good? Here's another two local examples, one from a, a sporting goods company, one from a bead making kit. In both of these instances, when you purchased a product, either ski goggles or from the other company, um, a, an at-home bracelet kit, they gave a product to somebody who really deserves one. So the ski goggles unlocked PPE goggles for doctors and the bracelet company, a purchase unlocked the same kit sent to a child at a children's hospital. So make people feel better about their purchases. Give them a reason to engage with you and do some real good at the same time. You could also do this by using fundamentally your expertise in a way that um, holds on to your brand equity. So here is a um, a beer company in the UK called BrewDog. They use their operations to stop making beer and start making hand sanitizer, but they called the hand sanitizer uh, brew gel and they called it punk sanitizer. So this is not your mother's Purell, right? They managed to do some good, get some publicity for it, help some people stay safe, but keep their brand equity. Similarly, I've seen brands like Paranoid Fan, which you might know about. This is um, a brand that helps fans navigate entrances, food options, delivery at big stadiums. They took their core competency and twisted it to a new business, uh, a new business actually, um, where because people are not really attending big stadiums right now, they took those same capabilities and created um, this brand which is called Neptune, which helps uh, food banks and farmers markets with their logistics and gets connected the right people, the right places with food and helps with the issue of food instability, which is a huge issue right now. So these are the three strategies, twisting your offering, twisting your touch points and twisting for the greater good. And I'm hoping that you have come up with some ideas here. Um, and I just wanna say before we get to the Q&A that this should be a collective effort. One of the things about all these twists that I'm really excited about is that you can work with, you know, organizers can work with destinations, venues, suppliers, partners, exhibitors, sponsors to achieve these common goals, to twist together, to come up with new ideas, new touch points, ways to give back to your community. And I think you will find some new business ideas here that will help keep customers engaged, maybe bring in some income, but also you'll have fun and you'll feel good about it. So thank you very much for listening. And I'm now looking forward to answering your questions in the Q&A. Julie. Thank you very much. That was uh, the part two was even better than part one. Um, and I, I think your closing message of how it's important for the destinations and the organizers and the and our supplier partners and anchor exhibitors and sponsors to work together. I mean, that's a really important message. You're exactly right. And it's going to be key for us to get through this to the other side. So so thank you for that. Um, we, we have some we have some questions here. Um, I, I hate to start off with this one, but uh, can you give us a few more examples of effective vomit bag moments? I never thought I would say those words in a sentence. <laughs> I know, uh, but there's so many. And, you know, one that I've been thinking about that we used to use on Virgin Mobile is actually when you have to collect information, let's say registration information from somebody, instead of just asking the questions that people expect, when we used to do this on Virgin Mobile, we would interrupt the regular questions with something like, 
how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood, right? Just a little surprise and delight moment to say, we know that this is a little bit onerous. You're going through a lot. You're giving us a lot of information. How can you have some fun with it? You know, um, another one is um, from MailChimp, right? When something goes wrong, when I lose a subscriber on MailChimp, uh, they send me a little note that says, bummer, you lost somebody. But right away it says, but here's how to increase you know and make some changes in your email marketing to make sure that you keep your subscribers in the future um, even your title can be a, a vomit bag moment right most of us have pretty standard titles vp sales director whatever it is you know i've seen a uh, chief innovation officer i saw somebody who just took a job at at and she's the chief marketing officer and she wrote marketing and growth officer mm -hmm. Right, so using language, you know, Snapple, when you open the Snapple, there's a little message under the cap. Mm -hmm. That's a vomit bag moment. So these moments that are part of your process right. um, that could actually have a little twist to them, get a smile and have a moment of connection. You're absolutely right with the titles. I, I met somebody and, and worked with him a, a few years ago. He gave himself the title of Grand Poobah. He owned, the, he, owned the <laughs> he owned the company and he called himself the Grand Poobah. Something yeah. that I thought was very interesting was the increasing the touch point, the customer touch point, while at the same time increasing the customer's uh, degree of choice while lowering prices. That's like a, 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 a triple threat. Yeah. Um, could you give us some more examples possibly in, in the meetings, exhibitions, trade show space of changing from an amenity kit to an amenity basket. Yeah, the swag bag is a perfect example of this. I mean, we spend a lot of time giving people things that they don't necessarily want and when they're traveling that they can't necessarily cra uh, carry. So why not do a customized, you know, advanced swag or digital swag where you actually ask me, what are you more interested in? You know, and it, it could be done digitally. Would you like a free session with so-and-so? Or, you know, would you like us to send something or information or, you know, insight to a report that you normally have to pay with, yeah. pay for? But, you know, asking people up front what they want and then delivering fewer things, but fewer things that are really going to get read or used. Well, actually, we did that with our uh, lunch coupon. We send everybody a lunch coupon who signed up with like a dozen different choices, so they, they got to choose. Yeah. So, so a question that came in from the audience, how can we take brand experience ideas and improve our customer service when things go poorly? Now, I think you just mentioned one, losing a subscriber, but how about some other experiences, some other ideas, when, something, when, when, when you're not in first class, when you're not getting a choice of the menus, when things go poorly? Yeah, I think right now it's time to pick up the phone. Yeah. You know, don't send an email, don't tweet back. Uh, you know, I had an experience at Canyon Ranch, the spa a few years ago where we, I used to go every year with some girlfriends and on the um, departure survey, my friend wrote, you know, I'm a little disappointed on the food. I think you've made some changes that I'm not really happy with. Right. And she was out uh, taking a walk one day and she got a call directly on her cell phone from the chief chef of wow. the whole Canyon Ranch operation, you know, saying, hi, Bonnie, I, I, do you have a minute? I'd really like to talk to you about what recipes you're missing or you'd, or you'd like to see. So, yep. you know, I think right now it's time to call and, I, you know, get somebody to call that's senior that's going to do something about it. Well, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. As a matter of fact, the last couple of days I made 100 phone calls to the uh, pre-registered attendees reminding them to log in. So on that note, don't be afraid to pick up the phone. Have the top person deal with, with problems, and that's really great advice. Thank you for part two of a wonderful keynote, and I hope you'll join us in the tech demos. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. Now I'd like to thank the following associations for their support of ECEF and for everything that they do for our industry. ASAE, SEER, ESCA, IAEE, PCMA, CISO, and UFI. Now I want to thank you for your active participation in ECEF 2020. Because of the number of meetings you've had and the appointments that you're going to have at the Tech Demos, it's my pleasure to announce that Lipman Connects will donate $2,000 to the Go Live Together campaign. 
Tomorrow morning, you will receive an email with an ECF survey from Sam Lippman at qualtricsresearch.com. Please complete this survey to help improve our future events. Keynote speaker videos will be posted on our YouTube channel by November 25th. And please stay connected with LippmanConnects.com for future digital summits and the attendee acquisition, exhibit sales, and large show roundtables. A huge thank you to the Freeman team for producing this real event in virtual space and MDG for attracting such a great audience. Also, my appreciation to Las Vegas for your longtime support and Destination DC, Map Your Show, Marriott's Global Events, and Shepard for your generous support. Thanks to my great team behind the scenes. It's been a privilege to work with them through the years, and especially this year, when they've all pivoted to support the virtual Lippman Connects through this pandemic. And a special thank you to my wife, Ellen. Couldn't have done it without you. Now, let's check out the 16 event-ready technologies in the tech demos. And don't forget, thanks to our tech demo sponsors, you can send three of your team tomorrow and Friday to learn how to make your events more relevant and profitable with these technologies. Ellen and I thank you for your support and see you in the tech demo.